Sometimes it feels like Christmas is all about worshipping the god of tradition. And, uh, Jesus Christ, he's probably a big one too. But think about it, it's a time of year dedicated to doing the same thing you did at that same time the year before. November comes to call and you get your peppermint mocha, you watch the same handful of movies, you sit through your favorite television specials, you listen to the same songs, and after New Year's you call it quits until Halloween ends, and then you do it all over again. It's difficult to even break into this antique closet of traditions and become part of the pantheon. I mean, how many classic Christmas songs that you expect to hear once December comes around have been made within the last five years? How many go-to Christmas movies haven't been around for at least a decade? Time is the only way to decide who lives and who dies by the Nutcracker's sword, and sometimes it feels entirely random who gets to come out victorious. I'm not saying this stuff to make it seem silly or anything, I personally love it, but being stuck in a jolly time loop once a year, every year, with largely the same icons and art, leaves a lot of room to debate whether or not any of it is worth the upkeep. Is Elf unfunny? Is Love actually cringy? Is Baby It's Cold Outside weird? And, you know, all the diehard stuff, whatever, I'm not bothering with that. The way we repeat these Yuletide decorations again and again finds us in the same spot with our pop culture discussions as well. And speaking of repetition... In the United States of America, it is tradition that the Turner family of television networks will play the 1983 comedy film A Christmas Story for roughly a full 24 hours, starting on Christmas Eve, usually around 8pm, and ending on Christmas night. The movie itself is on the shorter side, roughly an hour and a half long. This means that, should your family be like mine and leave this marathon on for a substantial portion of your holiday, you can watch the movie for roughly a dozen airings, all day, every year. A Christmas Story, which was released by MGM, did fine in its initial release. It got good reviews and recouped its modest $3 million budget a few times over. It was a standard success for a movie of its kind, but not a cultural juggernaut out the gate. Like other cult films of yesteryear, such as Rocky Horror and its holiday colleague It's a Wonderful Life, its massive legacy was a bit of a slow burn that grew over time. Turner Entertainment, part of the media empire that gave us the likes of TBS, TNT, Cartoon Network, and more, acquired the film when its very rich founder, Ted Turner, bought MGM in 1985, then sold the assets while retaining the library of all their films made before May 1986. Before the film even made its way to broadcast channels, though, it first found its home release footing when it was aired by premium cable networks like Showtime and the Movie Channel, networks which typically acquire licensing rights to air films first. TBS wasn't far behind, though, and four years after its release, A Christmas Story had its standard television premiere. But that was just once. The marathon method was another slow burn, so to speak. As the 90s came about, TBS began ratcheting up its commitment to the Ralphie agenda, and more and more airings of the movie became commonplace on its network. Finally, in 1997, fellow Turner Network TNT held the very first 24-hour marathon. It's been going ever since. That's 26 years now, by the way. Math. The networks that participate tend to rotate a bit based on whatever's cooking over in the Turner kitchen, but they've made it happen every year. So why this movie? There's no real hard and fast answer as far as I can tell, it's just one of those things that sort of happened. They had the rights to the movie, it did well when it aired, so it got bigger and bigger every year. But why do people want to hunker down with this movie every year, when there are oodles of Christmas classics to choose from? Oodles. Well, like I said, Christmas is the season of tradition. 24 hours watching one movie sounds exhausting, but if you only watch that movie once a year, you're basically backloading all your bumpus hound and BB gun jokes for the next 11 and a half months. I feel like this particular tradition rides the line between universal and niche. For families who observe it, I can say that it is a staple whose devotion borders on religious. Very appropriate. The idea of going one Christmas without at least one viewing feels unimaginable. For those who don't participate, its appeal is often practically non-existent. Through the division, the question remains, is this just a matter of learned habit, or is the movie really that good? Personally, I can understand why someone who didn't grow up in a Christmas story house might find this confusing. The movie is very light on story, and it's so deeply American that I can't imagine it doing this well basically anywhere else. It's a series of segments where the loose narrative thread is nine-year-old Ralphie jockeying to get the enviable Christmas present of a BB gun in 1940s Indiana. These segments are funny, but incredibly mundane, and if you've seen this movie, you know them all. The Ovaltine segment. Flick getting his tongue stuck to a flagpole. 
Ralphie saying fuck in front of his dad. Sorry, he actually says fudge. I think he was trying to get past the TikTok algorithm. The disturbing department store Santa. The bowling ball to the nuts. And so on and so forth. The structure makes sense, as the film is an adaptation of a 1966 book by humorist Gene Shepard, where Ralphie spends the text reminiscing about his childhood. It's not especially cinematic, there's no grand message or moral, and from an outside perspective, I can almost see this film being grating at best. A lot of aspects that I find hilarious now almost upset me as a child. The family dynamic is pretty dysfunctional, the humor is crass, the children in it spend a lot of time swearing and screaming and very authentically so. <coughs> also, this has been said a million times, but the final scene just did not age well. To explain the appeal of this movie, I feel like I have to in fact point to how unstructured and messy it is. In this sense, I think a Christmas story is like a bomb in how it deviates from prototypical Christmas special structure. So many Yuletide films, shows, and music are determined to have a constant message of overwhelmingly sweet sincerity and cheer. I don't think there's anything wrong with this necessarily. The world is depressing enough. Why not try to get some joy out of twinkly lights and seeing your family? But this can also easily veer into the realm of the exhaustingly overly positive. At some point, the idea of peace on earth and goodwill towards men begins to grate on you because, well, the world isn't all candy canes and gingerbread or however you'd say that, I don't know. A Christmas Story provides a stark and almost refreshing contrast. The characters are brash, loud, and often rude. They argue and swear at each other, often in ways that are irrational or excessive. They break things, they fist fight, they scream and act selfishly and get annoyed really easily. All the while, the bright lights and holiday standards are all around them. All this surly reality coexists with Christmas, and let's be honest, this is way closer to how the holiday season plays out in practice than when all of New York City sings together to power a magic sleigh, or a precocious child convinces the world that there is a Santa Claus. It is, frankly, a very realistic film, and I think that's a major element of its charm. Everyone who celebrates Christmas has probably had a year where they got a gift they didn't want from a relative that they had to put on a brave face for. Putting up the tree is often difficult and annoying, and potentially even dangerous. The line for Santa at the mall is long, loud, and exhausting, and the employees are not getting paid enough to do it. This movie acknowledges all of these everyday realities and more, and it does so with good comedy. A lot of holiday media tends to gloss over the fact that, for those participating in it, the Christmas season is often utterly exhausting. You have to spend a lot of money on gifts that you have to figure out in the first place. You invest hours into decorating and party planning and hosting. You try to make the season bright for hopeful kids whose wish list might not even be in your budget. A Christmas Story doesn't pretend that the veneer of Santa and snowflakes magically undoes the many-fold stress that comes along with the holidays every December without fail. And it does so with that same sharp humor. Gene Shepard provides incisive narration throughout the entire film as adult Ralphie, commenting on extremely silly matters of childhood like schoolyard dares, meeting a mall Santa, and solving a decoder puzzle with all the tension and dramatics of a Homeric epic. The performances in the film are as excellent as they are funny, and it's brimming with hilarious lines that are easy to regurgitate for a quick in-joke amongst your family. Not a finger! It takes the holly jolly season and imbues it with a healthy dose of wit and cynicism that not a lot of holiday specials deal in, let alone so well. And yet, despite this, the film is also reasonably hopeful. And I think this evenness is an even bigger key to its success than the realism. Interspersed with all this gruff and crude comedy are moments of genuine, equally realistic kindness and warmth. The scene where Ralphie's mother sees him with forgiving eyes after he's caught beating up a bully, and he feels connected to her when she doesn't tell his father after hours of him worrying about the discipline that he'd surely dole out. The scene where Ralphie's parents sit together after a long day of Christmas chaos and marvel at the sight of the lit up tree at night. The scene where Ralphie's father reveals that he went and got Ralphie the BB gun all along, because he had one when he was a boy. These moments are all incredibly touching, maybe even more so because they so easily echo real moments of human connection in our own lives. There's no magic or miracle or fantasy. It's the small, beautiful things that happen to real people that actually make the holiday special more than imaginary characters ever do. 
The film doesn't have some big message, but it does have a lot of smaller moments that make for something interesting to chew on. I always like the way that the old man's stern disciplinarian parenting style does little more than intimidate his kids into fearing him, while their mother's more nuanced and even unorthodox methods tend to yield a lot more success and trust. The kids are nasty and vulgar, but that's how a lot of kids are. Believe me, I was eight once. And I'd argue that this film understands the mindset of a child spectacularly. Ralphie's many fantasy sequences perfectly capture the grandiose and borderline vain imaginings of any child with the cartoony, self-involved view of the world that comes with just not being mature enough yet. Peter Billingsley is downright hilarious and completely convincing. And yeah, Ralphie's friends and classmates are snotty and obnoxious and drive the authority figures in their life up the wall, just like real children do in 1940, or 1980, or 2023. It harkens back to your own youth, making silly mistakes with your friends and doing whatever in the name of having fun. A lot of the kids you see in Christmas movies are adorable to a fault, endlessly pure in their moralizing and more generous than anyone on Earth. Ralphie is selfish, often pretty rude, and has his priorities completely skewed. You know, like an actual nine-year-old? Sure, he's an adorable little guy with big blue eyes and dorky glasses, but don't be fooled, he's no angel. He has a pretty wild persecution complex. Being provoked by his schoolyard bully has the power to whip him up into a violent rage, and he's willing to throw his own friends under the bus to save his skin. This messiness, emotional chaos, and lack of a strong moral compass doesn't make him any less compelling of a protagonist, however. If anything, it makes him more likable. We either knew a kid like Ralphie growing up, or maybe we were Ralphie. There's a kind of nostalgia to revisiting the ugly parts of childhood, especially the ones that often get ignored because of their ugliness. And this completely believable level of childishness makes the contrast with Shepard's verbose, erudite narration all the more funny. Of course, the kids in this movie aren't heartless monsters, either. When Ralphie gets caught wailing on Scott Farkas, also, fun fact, his name is not Scott Farkas, it is in fact Scott, which I think just adds to his slimy nature perfectly. Ralphie's little brother Randy, who up until this point has mostly been sitting around and whining, is inconsolable because he's convinced their rough and ornery father is going to kill Ralphie when he finds out. And seeing Randy so broken up is part of what convinces their mother to let Ralphie off the hook. Even Scut and his toady, Grover Dill, who spend most of the movie being perfectly nasty and combative, buckle when Ralphie fights back and revert to a childlike helplessness, seeking assistance from adults and crying out for mercy from the onslaught of Ralphie's tiny fists. This movie asks us to imagine kids the way they really are. Nasty, weird, but ultimately doing their best and making their way in a world that they just don't fully understand yet. And the result is a cast of child characters who are almost more sympathetic because you can see yourself or the kids you knew at that age in their well-written portrayals. It's completely convincing in every way and hilarious the whole time. So many Christmas movies ask us to imagine a world where everything works out perfectly, where people get along to an unrealistic extent, where some nebulous holiday magic can solve all our problems and bring peace to us all. A Christmas Story thinks that kind of logic is a load of baloney. And in a way, it is. The world simply doesn't work like it does in a cartoon where Santa can bring every poor child an ornate present or travel the world in one night. Even the kindest, most conscientious people have moments of greed and nastiness because, well, humans are flawed. Maybe the neighbor's dog is untrained and makes your life a little worse because of it. Your spouse might not always get along with you, even if you love each other a lot, and sometimes it's over incredibly petty stuff. Life is weird and messy and often frustrating. This stuff doesn't go away just because it's December. It's a nice change of pace to sit down with a holiday-themed dose of reality in a season that seems to demand you tune out all the bad stuff in a way that almost feels like what many would call toxic positivity. But at the same time, it shows you how there's still plenty of very real magic in the world that we do live in. Sometimes mom will come through and make your day a little easier. Sometimes you'll get that present that you wanted with all your heart, and you'll get to share it with your weird, dysfunctional family in a heap of wrapping paper. It's honestly the kind of lightning in a bottle you only really get once. Which is part of why I think the attempts at sequels and reproductions just don't match it, especially a musical. The whole movie is kind of a deviation from being showy and saccharine. There aren't many holiday films quite like it, let alone executed with such sharp writing and great acting. It's definitely one in a million in that respect. This movie puts an arm around your shoulder, hands you a glass of wine, and says, man, holidays, am I right? 
but its arm is around your shoulder anyway. It's a surly, stark reminder of what the Christmas season can really mean for most people, especially working class folks who can't always meet every giftless demand or mold their schedules to make sure everything goes off perfectly. It is, however, also a reminder that we can still have plenty of fun despite all the stress and the money and the loud noises. And in a way, I think that's even more inspiring than a talking snowman or a sleigh pulled by flying deer. I think it's almost the most inspiring holiday message of all. The kind of thing you might be open to watching for 24 consecutive hours while you throw out all the wrapping paper and try to make sure the turkey gets cooked.